Hi, it's Katrina. From flying to the moon and back to carrying up to 15,000 tons, here are 10 of the most extreme transportation vehicles. Number 10, Prelude FLNG. The Prelude FLNG is the largest offshore facility that has ever been built and is a floating liquefied gas platform. At 1,600 feet long and 243 feet wide, more than 260,000 tons of steel were needed to build it. When it's fully loaded, it displaces more than 600,000 tons, which is about five times that of the largest aircraft carriers in the U.S. Navy. The platform doesn't actually have any propulsion of its own, instead it relies on other ships to move it into position. Once it's in place, it has everything it needs to extract natural gas from the seabed and store it until it can offload to support ships. It costs about $12 billion to construct and is designed to withstand the forces of Category 5 hurricanes. It has been placed in position in Western Australian waters and is due to come online at some point during 2018. Number 9. Typhoon-class submarine. The Soviet-built Typhoon-class nuclear-powered submarine is, quite simply, the largest submersible vehicle ever to have been built. It was designed to counter the U.S.-built Ohio-class submarines. It managed to improve on them in terms of size at least. At 574 feet long and equipped with 200 weapons, including 20 nukes, it was one of the most feared vessels from the Cold War. It functions as its own weapons platform and is designed to keep its crew and munitions at sea for as long as needed. This sub can stay underwater for up to 120 days at down to 1,300 feet, only needing to resurface to replenish supplies for its 160 crew. It's such a formidable construction that in the 90s, they considered turning some of the subs into cargo vessels for use under the ice caps, with estimates suggesting they would be able to transport 10,000 tons of cargo on board. Number 8. The Saturn V the Saturn V is the most revolutionary vehicle ever designed by humankind. Controlled by computer technology with far less power than you'll find even in your smartphone, it was designed to take three people to the moon and back. The first unmanned test flight was launched in 1967, and a total of 13 of the rockets took flight between then and 1973. The Saturn V was responsible for the first moon landing, the subsequent Apollo missions, and for launching the Skylab space station. Each part of the rocket was used during a mission, with only the command module making it back to Earth. The rocket's first stage held 203,400 gallons of kerosene and 318,000 gallons of liquid oxygen for liftoff. This stage was released to fall back to Earth when it reached an altitude of 42 miles, when the second stage containing 260,000 gallons of liquid hydrogen and 80,000 gallons of liquid oxygen would fire. The third stage took over 9 minutes and 9 seconds after launch and provided the remaining thrust needed to get to orbit. Then it would engage again to take the rocket towards the moon. This was the first multi-purpose space vehicle to begin our exploration beyond our planet, and it was a monster. When fueled on the launch pad, it was 363 feet tall, could lift a weight of 130 metric tons, and had a thrust of 7.5 million pounds. To put that into perspective, the space shuttle was half the size and could lift a weight of about 25 tons, so despite technology and efficiencies improving, the capabilities of the Saturn V have never been reached again. Number 7. The Zuber Class Hovercraft This is the Zuber Class Hovercraft, the largest vehicle of its type that's ever been built. It's also the biggest combat vehicle other than a warship used by any army in the world. It's all because of Russia's need to improve their firepower towards the end of the Cold War. It was designed by Almaz Shipbuilding in St. Petersburg. The hovercraft is 187 feet long, 84 feet tall, and has a ground clearance of 5 feet. It has a cargo hold with 4,300 square feet of space, which allows it to transport three battle tanks, 10 armored vehicles, 8 armored personnel carriers, 8 amphibious tanks, or up to 500 personnel. In total, it can carry a load of up to 555 tons, which is more than enough in itself to change the course of a battle. Currently, there are seven Zuber-class hovercraft in operation around the world, with two in the Russian Navy, four in the Greek Navy, and one belonging to China. In 2017, the Russians announced that production of the vehicles would begin again, expecting them to enter service in the next 10 years. 
These machines are a triumph of design and engineering, pushing the limits of what's possible with a hovercraft to its full extent. They can reach speeds of up to 63 knots and give the military a wide range of deployment options. Number 6. The Shuerl SPMT Most objects can be transported by using trucks, but what if you have something too bulky or heavy to carry in the normal way? Well, one solution developed by Shuerl in the 1980s was the SPMT, or Self-Propelled Modular Transporter. They are essentially large platforms atop a number of wheels. If one isn't enough, you can connect them together, which means they can transport virtually anything. They move on their own and are networked so they work in tandem. SPMTs are used across a range of industries and are often used to move large sections of bridges and oil rig platforms. In fact, 70% of all transports weighing over 3,000 tons and 90% of transports weighing over 5,000 tons are done by using the Shuerl SPMT system. They also hold the record for transporting the heaviest load ever at a whopping 15,000 tons. Industries that require mass loads to be transported have begun to see the benefits of this system, and it will only help to facilitate mass construction in the future while helping to significantly reduce costs. Number 5. Antonov 225 Maria In 1988, the Soviet Union were developing their space program and needed a way to transport their own version of a space shuttle. While their space vehicle would only go on to make one actual space flight, the plane they designed to move it about has continued in service, and it remains the largest aircraft ever built. The Antonov 225 Maria attracts visitors to wherever it lands, and it's clear to see why. This monstrous machine is used to transport large objects around the world, such as power generators and vehicles, and its stats are simply astounding. It is 275 feet long, has a wingspan of 290 feet, and weighs 600 tons when full with cargo and fuel. There is enough space inside to carry 50 cars, or 4 battle tanks, and the length of the cargo hold alone is 142 feet long. The plane holds the record for the heaviest single object carried by air, which was a 247-ton piece of oil pipe. To do this requires 32 wheels across its giant landing gear. It has six engines and can lower its nose for loading. If you have something heavy that you need flown somewhere, this is definitely the plane for you. There is currently only one in the world, but there are plans to construct a new one to be used as a Chinese satellite launcher, so keep an eye out in the skies. Number 4. Letourneau TC-497 Overland Train With the TC-497, Letourneau manufacturers thought they had come up with the next best thing. Train transport is incredibly useful, but comes with limitations since it is limited to where the track goes. What if you wanted to transport your goods to somewhere not served by a railway? Or if it's under extreme conditions like the Arctic or a desert? Or what if the rail network was compromised due to an act of war? Well, the solution, as Le Tourneau saw it, was an overland train. In 1962, the TC-497 was developed and tested by the U.S. Army. It consisted of a control car and 12 trailers, at a total length of 572 feet. Two of the trailers were dedicated to holding the machinery simply to power it, which included four solar gas turbine engines that powered 54 motors, one on each wheel. Underwhelmingly, though, it could only carry a total of 150 tons, but it was able to traverse incredibly hostile terrain. The train impressed during testing in 1962, but Les Tourneaux were too late. It was about this time that large freight helicopters were developed, offering a much more convenient solution to off-road transport. Impressive, but a little late. Number 3. Ford Class Carrier the U.S. Navy's Ford-class carriers are the largest warships to have ever been built anywhere in the world, and they are simply incredible vessels. They are 1,106 feet long and are floating cities with everything they need to continually operate. These carriers are a brand new design intended to replace the previous largest carriers, the Nimitz-class. So far, there is only one Ford-class carrier in service, the Gerald R. Ford. When fully loaded, their water displacement is about 100,000 tons, and they can steam through the water at more than 30 knots, the equivalent of 35 miles per hour. This propulsion and all other power requirements is generated by two highly advanced A1B nuclear reactors, which also means that the ships have effectively an unlimited range. With a crew complement of about 2,600 and the ability to carry more than 75 aircraft, the Ford-class carriers are undoubtedly the most powerful water vessels ever conceived. Number 2. The Bagger 293 This is the heaviest land vehicle to have ever been built, weighing an astounding 14,200 tons. 
The German-built machine was the latest in the line of baggers and was built in 1995. It's a bucket wheel excavator with the ability to move more than 219,000 tons of soil every day, which is enough to fill 96 Olympic swimming pools. This beast is 310 feet tall and 722 feet long. It permanently works at the Hambach strip mine in western Germany where it digs for lignite. The machine is so large that it requires five different people to operate it at any one time, who ensure that the 18 1,452 gallon buckets, conveyor belt, and boom arm move in tandem. Number 1. The NASA Crawler Transporter When NASA began developing spacecraft, it became clear that these vehicles would be huge. As I mentioned earlier, the Saturn V rockets weighed a bunch, but merely designing and building these vehicles wasn't enough. They also needed to design a way of transporting them to their launch pads. This is where the crawler transporters came in, the largest self-powered land vehicles ever to be built. They were originally built in 1965 to support the Apollo program and stayed in service right through to the space shuttles. Even now, they are being refitted to work with the Orion spacecraft and NASA's mission to get to Mars and explore further into the solar system. Each of the crawlers is 131 feet long and 114 feet wide and are designed to keep the weight equally distributed. They each have 16 traction motors, two AC generators, two DC generators, and two control cabs. They can carry huge weights with the awkwardly shaped Saturn V rocket and Apollo capsules weighing almost 6,000 tons. And they manage to do this at a speed of one mile per hour. Of course, it's vital that this be a slow and careful process, and the crawlers have reliably done this ever since their construction. Thanks for watching. Remember to subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Bye!